Hi guys, welcome to episode two. Yeah, because we've made one video already of this little dev talk that we now call Dwarf Talks. So I'm excited to do episode two now. Today we're going to talk about something that one of you community members has suggested. You suggested that we talk a bit about the damage multipliers and how the damage systems work and in general the statistics of the game as far as I understood. And I'm also going to talk a bit about the build pads that you have as a character. So I have prepared a scene for that uh, here, bam, and I can switch back. As you know, I learned that in the first episode. But what we have here is the cute little lightning caller mage. Uh, I'll move around a little bit with it. You can see that it flies here with its small fluffy wings. Um, and today we're going to talk about how we can build this character, basically. Um, in the game, we have statistics, like in most other games, and we have kind of a combat rule set. Uh, which is modeled by League of Legends um, so that LOL players are very familiar with the game because we want to appeal to mobile players and make them feel very at home when they play this game. So there's no reason to invent the wheel here. It's a bit like how Baldur's Gate is using um, the, uh, the rule set from Dungeons and Dragons. Okay, so look up here. You can press tab in the game to, to get this view. You have your health have your attack damage, you have your armor, which reduces physical damage uh, and attack power, sorry, ability power and magic resistance and so on. So uh, statistics that you are probably very familiar with. Now, uh, to understand how your character can scale, you must read its abilities, of course. And um, if we start with the first ability, the innate here, it's called Volatile Dynamic and it is based on Generating saps when you hit a target, either with an ability or a um, your basic attack, and then you generate energy. And you can see here, I give I get 50 energy whenever I hit a target with sap. I can also do this faster by using abilities, and then you will notice I generate more of these circuit orbs. The circuit orbs' point is to deal an additional damage, but I need to hit with them differently because they circuit around me. Therefore, the name circuit orbs. Um, so, uh, this scales, as you see here, damage gains 50% um, from attack damage and 50% from attack power. So, you can scale it with either of these attributes, but it wouldn't scale with health, for instance, which um, a character like the Stoutheart would actually, he would scale with health on some of his abilities. Then we have the Sparkflight Q, it scales with attack damage. You'll see here the orange little X here, and um, it's basically increasing a lot with that. And it looks like this. Bam! I'm also immune when I do it, which is pretty cool for uh, breaking some projectiles. Then we have the W, which scales with uh, ability power, purple here, and it looks like this. Bam! And then we have the E, which scales with ability power 2, and it looks like this. Smack! Notice I'm, I have quick cast on. And then we have electric form, and this spawns circuit orbs, which scales with both, as we learned in the innate. It looks like this. I'm popping a bunch of circuit orbs, and then my energy generation just uh, is doubled. So that means that I spawn a lot more circuit orbs when, I, uh, when I'm in this stage. But it only lasts 10 seconds. From this we've learned that Q scales with attack damage and W and E scales with ability power and the innate and the ultra scales with both. So I have been out and I found a little chest when I was out and looting and then I picked it up. I mean I opened it because yeah, I opened it because why would I pick up a chest? So I opened the chest and I found a torrent item here. And this item is particularly cool because after I move, it increases my uh, damage when I move a few meters. Uh, so after every meter move, increase damage. So that means, let me equip it so you can see here. Equip. I've moved a little. Uh, or when I haven't moved, I deal 83 damage. When I move a little, I deal more. You see, right? But the cool thing about this character is that it can move very swiftly with its spark flight. So if I attack here my default would be if i haven't moved 83 damage but then i jump on the other side and now i deal 148 wow i'm just so excited that i found this item for this character 
then I want to consider how I can amplify this even further. So I'm going to open up my perks to see, is there something cool I can equip here? Oh, and I forgot, damn, I'm only level one, so I only have one option. But will this option be great for my build? And it actually would, because it increases, or actually reduces the cooldown of my cure ability when I attack with my basic attack. So that is perfect, and I have equipped it. And so I actually have a build going. That means because this also is an on hit effect, I now care about attack speed also. So um, let's see if I found something cool on some of my excursions here. And I, I have, for instance, uh, boots of accuracy. It's attack damage. It's definitely something I want. I have crown of accuracy. It's attack damage, also something I want. And this torsos generally give a lot more uh, attribute bonuses than uh, most other equipment. So it's really cool to find an attack damage torso. It's, it's common only, so it's not too much, but it's all the bits and pieces here really accumulate attack damage over time. So I'm going to put that on as well. And then I'm extra excited about this uh, because it also gives attack speed. It's, uh, it's not too much, but it's cool. And every little attack speed counts. And it, it is a perfect synergy with my build here, with momentum and the perk that makes me uh, use my Q much more often. So there we go. I already kind of have a build going on for this character, even with a few simple items here. And uh, hopefully this gives you an idea of how it works and how you can, how you can scale your characters. Um, one last thing that uh, Pub and Slim Jim asked for is to talk a little bit about the uh, the different, uh, you could say, uh, damage calculations in the game. And that's always a, a big thing in, in, in many games because it can be very complex. But the, the TLDR here is that uh, in PvP the main thing that can really modify uh, or be a multiplier is your uh, critical, uh, critical chance because it allows you to critically uh, strike. And that can be a multiplier on your damage, 175% by default. And that's the key thing in PvP. But there's a bunch of other things that you can use in PvE. Actually, two other things. You can find attributes that increases your damage, all your damage, against a, uh, a boss or bosses or minions. Furthermore, there is also vulnerability. When, and I'm going to show you here on, on this minion, some minions become vulnerable when they do an attack. Actually, almost every uh, PvE enemy in the game becomes vulnerable at certain attacks. And this uh, swarmer here, it, it becomes vulnerable when it charges or right after. When you hit it, when it is vulnerable, you get a skull. And the uh, skull is uh, kind of showing you that you hit it at the right time. And that is, that is extremely important to learn to know, uh, get to know about each character. So, uh, so hopefully this uh, gave you a good idea of how the different damage systems work in the game. And now I can hear my family is coming home, so they are probably going to disrupt me soon. So I'm going to shut off this video now. Please put in more suggestions of uh, what we should show you uh, next time, like Pop and Slim Jim did. And uh, be sure to join the playtest on 5th of October, which lasts for five days. Imagine the crazy builds you could do if you accumulated all that sweet loot. You can even put invisibility potions on if you find it like look at this it's so cool actually i'm not showing you now i'm showing you right i just made myself invisible okay weird outro thanks so much for watching see you next time